G'day, mate. Have a look at this little devil just here. This is the thorny devil. This is my favourite lizard on the face of the earth, and I work with two Komodo dragons far out. This is like the most iconic lizard, not in Australia, in the world, I reckon. Now, these are a really interesting lizard to survive out in this hostile environment. In fact, just behind me there, you can't see it, but when I stand up, I can see Uluru. So this guy is literally in the hottest, most arid environment in Australia by far, and he's learned to adapt and survive phenomenally well. So firstly, defense. You can't get better than thorns. Nothing wants to eat you. The only way they possibly could is if they flip him on his back. Now, if they were to have a good hard crack at him, he actually tilts his little gorgeous little face down and hides it, and he'll actually expose this little nodule on top, and that is his false head. So they can bite onto that. They can potentially uh, rip that off, and he doesn't lose his head. He walks away, gets away with it. So very, very smart, clever little dude. Now, the other thing to surviving out here is your resources, your food and your water. Everything needs food and water to survive, and this guy knows how to find it. He's actually got the most specialized little beak, the little mouth on the face of the earth. It's a tiny little mouth with a very cute little tongue and one row of teeth, just like any other dragon, like a bearded dragon. It is literally just designed for eating tiny little ants. Once he's got his food sorted, he's got to get his water content. Now, he can't just go up to any puddle of water and just sit there and slurp away as you'd imagine he'd do. He actually has to use capillary action, something that has taken 40 years of scientific research to get a better understanding of. He's got tiny little channels that run between all of these scales. They've actually done a bit of research in WA with the devils over there. What they've found is with six individual lizards, they sat them in puddles of water and they would sit there and they would fill up all their capillaries. Their capillaries actually have to, these tiny little channels have to be full of water. They just can't have a tiny little drop. They have to have, it absolutely soaks. And then that actually enables them to contract their muscles, contract the capillaries and push that water closer and closer until it's into their mouth and that's where they drink. These lizards are observed, particularly after rain, to sit in the wet sand, the moist sand, and bury themselves down and they cover their back with the moist sand, which actually is covering a bigger surface of the area of the lizard to enable more water to be put into those channels. And the way that they get the water out of the sand is simply using gravity. The water comes down out of the sand onto their back into the channels. They then push it to their mouth and that's how they drink in a very, very hostile environment. My favorite lizard, one of my top favorite animals on the face of the earth, and I'm gonna let him go right now. See you later, big boy. <laughs> See you later, mate.